Hope everybody is enjoying a snowy day and keeping warm. So today I wanted to talk about my favorite TV show that I watched when I was a teenager, Friends. Um, I have watched several videos of Miss Mojo on Miss Mojo's channel in preparation for making this video. Let me just pull up my notes. which are right here. Okay, so the first video that I watched was the top favorite love interests. Um, my first one was Janine LaCroix, who was played by Elle McPherson, who was an Australian supermodel at the time. I think I just liked this particular person who dated Joey in a few episodes. Um, because she has my name and my name is not that popular. Um, the next one I liked is Paul Stevens, who played the father of the student that Ross dates. I think that was in season five or season six. And he was played by Bruce Willis. And what's so sad about Bruce Willis is that now he has dementia. So seeing that... If I were to go back to watch that episode where he guest starred, I think it would be sad for me to see knowing what he's going through now. I'm very sad for him and his family. Dementia is not easy to deal with. I, I know this because I had two grandmothers who had Alzheimer's disease slash dementia, and it was very hard to uh, see them lose their memory. Um, the next person was Bonnie. She was in the episode when... They went on vacation, I think it was to the beach, and, like, Rachel shaved her head out of jealousy or something. Um, I liked Bonnie. I thought she was a good match for Ross, actually, better than Rachel was, because, obviously, as I have said in previous videos, they did not get along at all that great. Um, the next person is Carol Willock, who was Ross's ex-wife, who turned out to be a lesbian. I loved Carol. I think she was my favorite um, recurring character on Friends and my favorite love interest. Um, I really liked how Ross and Carol maintained a relationship after they broke up, but I always wondered after a few seasons what happened to Ben and where they went. Um, he only appeared in a few episodes in seasons five and six after Ross had his breakdown with getting, like losing his apartment, lose, um, no, getting evicted, his marriage to Emily falling apart because he said Rachel's name at the altar. And then, um, getting mad about his person at work eating his sandwich. So um, I sometimes wonder what happened to Ben after all of that stuff went down because you didn't really see him in all of, ep of episodes after that and he never got to meet his sister Emma either. So if Friends were remade today or there were a spinoff series, I would have loved to see how all of the kids interact with each other, Emma and Ben, and how they interact with their cousins, Chandler and Monica's kids, Jack and Erica. Um, and I, I can't read what this person says. Um, top 10, top five favorite friends jokes were Unagi, which was in the episode where um, Rachel uh, Ross was trying to teach Rachel and Phoebe a self-defense move that he was learning or something. And um, like he kind of uses it to play a prank on them. And then at the end of the episode, Rachel and Phoebe get back at him by playing a plank at him, and Rachel goes, ah, salmon spring roll. 
So I like that episode a lot. It's really, it's really one of the funniest ones. Now, the second Friends jokes that, that never gets old, that I thought I would mention I don't understand very well is the juice box. It's the one when Rachel and Ross have a date in the planetarium at Ross's museum and like, Ross makes a comment about rolling over the juice box and like when this episode first aired I didn't understand the joke I am now 37 I still do not understand the joke the episode first aired when I was probably like 13 or 14 I don't know if that joke was supposed to be sexual or what but apparently it was an adult joke that went over my head and still goes over my head so if people remember that episode of Friends and can educate me on what that joke is supposed to mean, I would appreciate it because it still is confusing to me. The jer the third joke from Friends that I thought was really funny was Joey doesn't share food. Um, I can relate to Joey's character because I am Italian, I have a large family, and I love food. But unlike Joey, I have no problems with sharing my food. Joey seems to have problems with sharing his food. I never figured out why that was either. Pivot. That was the episode where Ross was moving into his new apartment. And he asked Rachel and Chandler to help him move the new couch up the narrow staircase to his new apartment. And I just thought that whole scene with trying to move the couch up the stairs was funny. And there's actually a really good blooper scene of that scene two, which I like to watch. And then Ross's trip to the sun. This was the episode where Ross is insecure about how he looks, so he's jealous of Monica's tan, and he goes to get a spray tan, but he doesn't know how to do the spray tan very well, so he uh gets it sprayed unevenly and when Chandler um and Monica see him afterwards um Ross is like so I went to that place where your wife recommended for me to get the tan and Chandler responds was that place the sun and like that's one of my favorite Chandler quotes of all time from friends. It's just so funny and it's so on point. The also the other point the other quote he makes about Ross's tan is that he can play ebony and ivory all by himself. I cracked up at that one too. Top five friends running gags. Regina Philange, which is like Phoebe's alternate personality, um, in a fr in a few episodes, um. Like, she uses it in one instance where Joey is at an audition speaking French, and she pretends to, like, be his sister, and she goes, Je suis Regine, Regine Frelange. I am from the um, French province of Estée Lauder. And she also uses Regine Frelange to get Rachel to get off the plane and go back to Ross after deciding to go to Paris, which I talked in my video yesterday when I talked about serious issues that Friends covered about how I didn't really like how Rachel and Ross were paired up in Friends and how I thought they were a bad couple. So I don't want to get into that again because I've already discussed it and gone into great detail about how much I hate that pairing. Um, so the second... The second friends running gag that I liked a lot was this. It was like when they bang the two fists together, one, two, like that. And basically, this joke originated between Ross and Monica when they were kids, when they didn't want their parents to figure out that they were giving each other their middle finger. So I just thought this running gag was used ingeniously not just by Ross and Monica throughout the show, but throughout other characters in certain situations throughout the various episodes as well. Um, 
Let's talk about Gunther. Gunther was my favorite recurring character in Friends. He was the barista in the Central Park coffee shop, and he was... He had an unrequited crush on Rachel throughout the whole season. So basically the analysis I can come up for Gunther's crush on Rachel is Charlie Brown with a little redhead girl. Gunther is obviously Charlie Brown, afraid to express his feelings for his crush. And Rachel is the little redhead, little redhead girl that he, she, he's always afraid to approach. And I thought it was really sweet. And at the end of the series, how Gunther finally told Rachel that he loved her. And though Rachel didn't reciprocate the feelings, I just thought it was great for Gunther's character development that he was finally able to get his feelings for Rachel out in the open um and I was really sad when I heard that the actor who played Gunther passed away his name was James Michael James Michael Tyler and he died of cancer two years ago back in 2021 which is very very sad um the next running gag of uh friends that I really liked was Chandler's dance like basically this was made fun of throughout the series a lot because Chandler is not coordinated and he's really not a good dancer and I mean I can relate to that I'm not because of my cerebral palsy I'm not good at sports either and I'm also not very coordinated and I'm not too good at dancing myself so that makes Chandler a very relatable character for me which is funny it's funny that I bring that up because Chandler is actually the character from Friends that matches up the best with my birth sign, which I think is perfect based on what I just said. Let me try to see if I can imitate the Chandler dance. I'm not really sure if I can. I'm gonna get up and try it. Hold on just a second. Let me see here. Uh, like, let's push this back a little. So it was like, he thr thrusted his hips like this and uh, did like, uh, uh, kind of like like that I don't know I think I did bad with that um and then Phoebe's rough life like oops sorry the last running gag in Friends that I really liked that I thought was really interesting was how like Phoebe would mention things about her backstory and how she was like from a rough background and how her parents were divorced and like she gives us small insights into her life throughout the series but then they're never talked about again and i really wish they had developed phoebe's character a little bit better because i would have liked to know more about how she was raised how she felt have how, how she felt about herself with having to um like having to rob people to make ends meet for her and her family her relationship with ursula they they obviously are twin sisters that don't get along but i would have loved to learn more about that dynamic between ursula and phoebe who were both played by lisa kudrow actually which was phenomenal um that she was able to play both characters so well in the same scene i give props to lisa kudrow for being able to do that ursula was also a character on Mad About You, which aired at the same time as Friends. Um, and back to Phoebe. It was interesting because in a video that I watched recently on Friends, on Miss Mojo, um, the commenter said that she was able to relate to Phoebe due to her autism. Like, this person who was leaving the comment said that she's autistic and she was able to relate to Phoebe's character very well. I don't know if it's because she was quirky or if it was because Phoebe was supposed to be autistic, but the writers never went into the fact that she had a learning disability or anything. It would have been cool if that had been discussed a little bit more too, because like, I know as for me, I wasn't diagnosed with my learning disability until I was 14. And like, there's so much mystery around Phoebe's character. Like you don't really know much about her. And um, back in the 90s, 
autism was not so widely diagnosed among people, especially females. And it would have been interesting to find out if Phoebe did have an autism spectrum disorder because that would make the character much more easily to relate to. And like the person who commented on Miss Mojo's video didn't really say why she was easily found it easy for her to connect to Phoebe because was it just because she was generally quirky or was it because she had an undiagnosed case of autism? I, e I actually emailed Lisa Kudrow a couple of days ago to ask her that and I'm still waiting to see what she responds. She hasn't answered me, so I'm waiting to hear back on what she says. As far as talking about serious issues um, in Friends, like... Yes, Phoebe's backstory is something I would have liked to see them do an episode about and do a deep dive more into. Another thing that I felt was like really not treated very properly was when Phoebe was assaulted by Rachel's boyfriend Paolo at her job. Like, I feel like that whole situation with sexual assault was not really handled very well because during the scenes where... Phoebe is trying to explain things to Rachel. There's a laugh track going over what the lines are. And like, I think that scene would have been more emotional if they did not use the laugh track. And it pissed me off that they used the laugh track during that scene because it made what Phoebe went through to seem more like a joke and not something that was serious as it was supposed to be. Um, another serious issue in Friends that I felt was not really covered was um, parental um, favoritism. Like, it's seen a little bit uh, between Ross and Monica and their parents. Like, Ross is obviously the favorite child, and... Their mother isn't exactly always nice to Monica. And I mean, I felt really bad for Monica. I really did. I wasn't able to relate to her specifically because I have never had that situation in my own family. But I just felt bad for Monica because her mom was really friggin' mean. And there's a fan theory that explains the reasoning behind this that I think makes a lot of sense. I don't know if it's true. But basically, the fan theory says that the reason why her mother isn't nice to her is because Monica was born out of an affair. So basically, she's not really Jack's daughter. Jack is Monica and Ross's dad. And um, I just think maybe the reason why her mom was always mean to her throughout the series was because she was mad at herself for having an affair with somebody else and having a baby born out of wedlock. Like, it would have been nice to see Monica reconcile with her mother at some point during the show, but that never happened. But maybe if there was a spin-off series made that focuses on how Chandler and Monica have a relationship with their own kids, it would be nice to see Monica not favor one child out of the other, of, over the other like her mother did with her and Ross. And maybe it would be nice to see if Monica could reconcile the issues that she had with her mom because it obviously affects her very negatively from what I was able to observe throughout watching the series. Another thing that was not talked about as much was the age gap in relationships. You see this with Monica and her boyfriend, Richard, who is played by Tom Selleck. And then you see this with Phoebe's brother, Frank Jr., who falls in love with his home economics teacher, Alice. Like, I would have loved more development into how Monica met Richard, how, well, how, Alice having a relationship with a student could have affected her job. Maybe it got it got her fired because 
the fact that she was having relationships with a student was frowned upon. Um, so I wish that was another storyline that had been developed throughout the series because it's something that's mentioned for an episode and then not really mentioned again. Um, so those are serious issues I felt should have been handled better in Friends. Um, and I would have put any of these issues I just talked about in the spot in Miss Mojo's video for number 10 where they talk about male affection. Because I, I don't really see male affection as a serious issue. All of the issues that I just mentioned are more serious issues than male affection, in my opinion. Um, and I already went into, in last night's video, which you can watch on Instagram about the other serious issues that were talked about in Miss Mojo's video. So check that video out. I am opening a discussion specifically about how transgender issues were handled in Friends. And I would like for my transgender friends to weigh in on their opinions on how the situation with Chandler's relationship with his dad was handled how that could have been handled better today. Um, if there were a spinoff special made that focuses on Chandler's relationship with his dad, how Chandler's kids would have a relationship with her grandfather that's transgender, and how they would inspire their dad to maybe be more open to hit their grandfather's sexuality and not be so resentful for how it split apart his family as a child. So please weigh in with your thoughts over on Instagram on that video. And have a nice day and a great weekend. And I will be back later this weekend with my movie review live stream about Lyle Lyle Crocodile, J a man called of a man called Otto. Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs, James and the Giant Peach, and Muppets Treasure Island. That video should be up either Saturday night or early Sunday morning, so be sure to tune in. And thanks for watching this video.